Hey everyone, um, I just wanted to record a short video just to talk about GraphQL, uh, what it is, uh, what it isn't, and um, yeah, just, just give you a, a quick overview, a quick snapshot into um, why you may use it. Um, so yeah, you probably heard of GraphQL, it's gained a lot of momentum as being a replacement for REST. Um, it's not a replacement for REST. Um, REST in itself is something which um, is perfectly normal um, and uh, it has a great use case um, and we'll never really see it go. Um, you know, some people still use SOAP, uh, you know, so it's not going to disappear forever. Um, but GraphQL opens up a whole um, a new area for web developers who are developing client applications on mobile, on web, um, to be able to get the data that they want uh, and a structure that they need. Um, so yeah, GraphQL has been used by Microsoft, um, Shopify, GitHub, um, to name a few. Uh, GitHub recently um, announced, um, I think it was at GitHub Universe, uh, their latest API is completely GraphQL based. Um, you, you know, so those guys are themselves, uh, that, that should be enough to sort of say, well, this isn't something that's going away soon. Um, and it, it's got a lot of support and a lot of big companies behind it. Um, but GraphQL is a query language um, that runs on the server. Um, that allows easier client-side manipulation. Um, it, you, you know, you can query data, you can mutate data. Um, there are fragments, directives, and even subscriptions in the latest version of um, uh, GraphQL. Uh, similar to REST, though, uh, GraphQL isn't actually uh, uh, a framework or something that you can install um, as a dependency. Um, there are various GraphQL implementations in Ruby, JavaScript, Go, you know, Node, whatever um, you decide to write your applications in or servers in, there is uh, most likely going to be a GraphQL uh, implementation. Um, I myself um, use uh, the JavaScript implementation um, on a Node server and that is perfectly normal. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of tutorials showing you using um, uh, JavaScript to do that. Um, as well as there are Ruby tutorials um, within Rails and Active Record. So, whatever you you know, whatever you use um, now, uh, you know you could slowly migrate your applications to use GraphQL. Uh, you don't have to replace everything. Um, but if you are someone that's building a mobile application and uh, a website um, or uh, an iPad native app or a React native app, uh, you may find that GraphQL allows you to get that information uh, in, in a much easier way. Um, you, you know, there are libraries like Relay Modern and uh, Apollo Client. Those allow you to wrap your React applications uh, in, a, in, in a way that, um, and not just React, but, uh, you know, if we take React as an example, you can, you can get data uh, and you can talk to the server directly within your components. Um, so, you know, there, there, you know, there aren't any sort of calls to a REST API. Um, you know, they would call to the, the, the GraphQL endpoint. Um, so yeah, um, you know, if you had a, um, a schema and GraphQL is built up of, of a schema, if we had a, a type of, of a uh, called product, a product could have a name, which is a string, a slug, which is a string, a price, which is maybe is a float. Um, and then it has uh, reviews. And, you know, a review may have an author and a message, uh, but a review may have a rating, and that you know that rating could have an author. That 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 rating, um, you know, would sort of belong to a review. Um, a product may have many reviews, but when you um, think about it in a graph world, that product, um, when you're querying for that information, you can just ask for it in uh, the structure, a JSON structure that you require back. So if you ask for the products and I'll display an example now what I mean but if you ask for um, uh, a product and reviews uh, you'll get that information back in that format you won't get anything more you won't get anything less and that's really powerful for front-end uh, client-side development is you don't want to always be making network requests um, for more information if you can ask for it in the first request 
And that's kind of the problem that REST has had um, in, in, in Gives. If the more that we develop uh, client applications on, on various devices, the, the, the problem is you, you always have to make additional requests for more information, or you are uh, coupling a endpoint to within your REST API to a particular view. And that's a huge problem when you look to upgrade your application or you change your database models. You've then got to go and update all of these endpoints. And that's really, um, uh, it's really a productivity killer. Uh, you, you could go as far as saying. Um, and, but what I particularly um, like um, uh, about GraphQL is all of, all of that I said already, but subscriptions is really new and it's really fascinating. Um, people used to pull the data um, from a server every 10 seconds, every 20 seconds, depending on how um, how often you need that information uh, updating. But GraphQL allows you to query your, um, qu query your database and um, uh, keep sort of an eye on that query. If that query changes, you're subscribing to any changes, you can specify if something is created within the query or something is updated or something is deleted, uh, y you can say, give me that updated information. Then you can adjust the UI as you go. Um, if you have an application that displays uh, products, if that product photo changes or the description or even uh, more importantly, the price changes, you want to be able to see that information there and then. Um, if you're searching uh, a catalog of products with prices, you don't want to be adding to a basket and then going, oh, the price has changed. If you're actually on the page and you add to basket, you might see the price adjust. Um, you know, or there's a new review added. Oh, someone's added a review. Great. You can see it there and then. And there's no refresh in the page um, like you'd have to do on traditional server side um, rendered applications. That's really exciting. Um, and, and there's a lot of talk on how to implement this. Apollo um, does, does it really well. Um, Definitely worth checking out. I'll link uh, I'll, I'll link below in the description a couple of uh, resources that will um, you know allow you to dive in and, and, and sort of get an idea of what's what's been used. Um, but yeah, GraphQL it's been designed by the guys at Facebook to work um, with uh, React um, on, on on their stack. But GraphQL it's just an endpoint, so you can send regular GET and POST requests. So don't feel as though, oh, I can't try GraphQL because it's for React developers. Um, that's just not true. Um, if you have an application and you're maybe looking at using React or Vue or um, you know, Angular or any, any of the, the frameworks that you want to use, GraphQL can be used as well. Um, and you can easily transition your legacy code bases used to GraphQL by just sending a GET request and a POST request um, to get information that you need. And you can slowly just change your application's view layer uh, as you go. So don't feel as though you have to completely rewrite the application. Um, so yeah, that that's just my thoughts um, in a couple of minutes as to why I like GraphQL and why I think uh, you might like it as well. Um, but yeah, give it a look. Have on their have a look on their website. Um, uh, I'd like to try and write a few tutorials and, and go into a bit more detail about GraphQL. Um, yeah, uh, let me know what you think. Um, this video is um, probably the first of a, a few others I want to create around GraphQL. So if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see, um, reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at Notrab or leave a comment um, and I'll see what I can do. And uh, yeah, have a great day, everyone.